I think it's time to ditch Spotify. You already read the title. You don't need the whole spiel. Maybe you haven't heard the news recently, but they're making some changes that to me are kind of like the final straw. And I think people should start moving away from Spotify just because it's getting less and less both user-friendly and artist-friendly. It's um, it's almost a monopoly. It only exists to line the pockets of CEOs, really. When you look up how much money a musician gets per stream on Spotify, it says 0 .003 to 0 .005. So I'm going to do some quick math. I'm just going to split the diff or split the difference or whatever the saying is. So let's say 0 .004 I'm going to get per stream on Spotify. A lot of albums these days around like 12 tracks depending on the genre it also so i'm gonna say an album is 12 tracks and a cd if you look it up on amazon they're around 12 dollars depending on how new or old it is so 12 track album for 12 dollars as a cd so if we do this this math real quick you would need 3,000 streams to make the $12 that you would get from selling a CD. This is ignoring like profit margins and like the cost of production of CDs, of course. With the profit margin, that's still a considerable difference. So for 3,000 streams to equal that cost of a CD, you would have to listen to an album 250 times as a single person. I've been obsessed with Tame Impala lately. Every time I work at my one job, I play Inner Speaker and Lonerism from start to finish both in a row and i still don't think i've reached 250 times whereas if i just bought a cd that's 12 dollars right away and i can listen as many times as i want until you know it breaks now 1 million streams that sounds like a lot you do that math real quick 1 million streams would come out to four thousand dollars so i'd have to sell 334 12 dollar cds to equal that four thousand dollars for 1 million streams do you know how many streams 1 million streams is? For a 12 track album, I'd have to listen to it 83,334 times because you can't listen to it 8 cuz you can't listen to it 83,333.3 repeating times. So I just said 334 just so it's like $4,000 and 0.004 cents, whatever. That's insane. Now granted if you're a massive artist and you drop an album like and you're like say you're drake and you drop an album immediately you're getting two thousand people listening to it right away but for like a normal person who doesn't date underage women that's not really doable and it's not sustainable now with this recent spotify news what they're doing is any song that doesn't get a thousand streams annually that's a key factor that I haven't seen people mentioning. Spotify will not be paying that out. Now, a thousand streams, that doesn't, it's not a lot. It comes out to $4, which doesn't sound like a lot. But then I saw this statistic, and I think it's from 2018, so it could be different now. But it said two thirds of all music on Spotify won't qualify for this. Two thirds of all music doesn't get a thousand streams annually. Two thirds of all music on Spotify. Do you have any idea how much music that is? Now, that could, that could be 0 .004 cents they're not handing out, or it could be $4 they're not handing out. But two-thirds, that's like at least 10 million songs. There's probably like 20 million songs. Do you know how much music is on Spotify? If you take Spotify's word for it, they're not pocketing all that money. Instead, they're paying it out to the people who get more than 1,000 streams annually on a song. So people who who surpass that milestone will be getting paid more allegedly but honestly with a massive corporation that's almost a monopoly basically a monopoly i don't trust them i don't trust them i'm sorry sue me but i suspect that they may allegedly they may not but allegedly in my opinion i wouldn't be surprised if they were pocketing that money so how do we how do we solve this problem so i think we should ditch spotify for one and most streaming services, I mean, Apple Music doesn't pay too well either. YouTube Music, I think, pays even less than Spotify. No one uses Tidal. I can't name any other ones. I guess, like, SoundCloud, but no one uses that either. But then again, no one uses anything besides, like, Apple Music and Spotify. So, we gotta figure something out. There's downsides to physical music, so I'm not exactly 
recommending everybody just buys physical music from this point on onward it's not really realistic you can't close pandora's box and the the, the downsides of physical music is it's less ac ac it's less accessible you can sell out and you can't get it stores might not even have it especially if you're a smaller artist you're not going to get a cd in, in target because that's payola google what payola is you have to pay to get your product in a target as a as a record label and stuff it costs more but that's that's the trade-off because artists are getting paid not even hay pennies less than a hay penny they can break they can scratch they can break they can skip they can melt in your car if you live in arizona you can't listen to the music in mass like you can on a streaming service i can open up spotify and listen to 20 different artists in the course of an hour from 20 different albums with physical music if you were just doing physical music you can't do that you got to buy it one at a time and if you tried to do that you'd go break broken a day that's just the facts of it but in a way i think that's kind of also a good thing but i'll get to that with the pros you can't test to see if you'll like the music either so you just would have to just commit to a cd before you even know what the music sounds like unless you're buying the cd at the band's live concert there are upsides to physical music you can use it without the internet if i'm camping god forbid i can't use apple music unless i'm camping right next to a cell tower but that's not really camping it that's like camping on easy mode i could uber eats mcdonald's to where i am camping that doesn't count but a cd you just stick it in a cd player or a car you don't need internet obviously the artist makes more upfront especially a smaller artist i don't know how it works with like record labels and stuff but most musicians these days don't use record labels they're kind of a, a thing of the past as time goes on um so with a cd you can make more upfront you can buy it like a 10 pack of cds for like i think 12 bucks like blank cds with the with the clear cases and you just got to burn your music onto them it's pretty cheap so if you sell one for each for like 10 bucks and you don't put any like covers on it or anything, then you could, you could be making like a $9 profit if you were, you know, lazy like me, where I just, you know, write the track list on an index card and tape it to the inside. Another thing, and I mentioned this a bit earlier with, you can't listen to music in mass. I think that's a good thing. There, there's been this like candyification of music since streaming happened. I just made up that term now, but it's like, there's no risk and reward to music. It's just, you open up an app and you can listen to whatever you want. There's no hunting for it. There's no commitment to it. So music has become a very background thing. It's always been a background thing, but now it's especially music is made for other things. People don't just put on music and listen to it. They put on music while they're doing something else or watching a TikTok that the song is in. So I think making the consumer slow down a bit, people won't like it. I think it's a good thing just for art in general to force people to think a little bit longer, maybe think a little critical and actually consume music as an art form rather than like it's McDonald's. And again, it's, it's physical music. And like I said, you can't open Pandora's box. So I think one of the best solutions right now would be a platform like Bandcamp. Now, there's also been bad news about Bandcamp in recent months and years of getting bought by different companies and then laying off employees and working with a skeleton crew. And that really sucks especially since they're unionized and it's very clear that they're trying to union bust without calling it union busting because that would be illegal but really it's it's i think it's the best option that we have at the moment for you people who are unfamiliar with bandcamp it's kind of like myspace but for musicians you can customize your page like the background colors you can use like images for your header and like you can set up a merch tab so um people who want to buy physical copies can buy physical copies or t-shirts or vinyls or cassettes by the way that's a big commitment people who sell cassettes of the music because no i don't know a single person with a cassette player also as a musician you can set the number of free listens that someone can get before they have to buy it or you could just say it's free forever. So for me, I think my most recent project, I said th three free lessons and then you gotta, you gotta buy them. But then I could also say, oh, it's just free, but there's a donation button. So even if it's free, people can just send you money, say thanks for the new music. Or I could say, 
this whole album costs a dollar and people can choose to pay more. And also when you buy the music, you can download the actual file and do whatever you want with it. It's not just stuck on the streaming service. Like if I download music on Apple Music, I can't like move the file off my phone onto my computer. With Bandcamp, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Anyways, thanks for watching and bye.